So this video is on um, statistical testing using R and just like Maxima, R uses a very standard um, testing object uh, for all tests um, such as the mean test, the test for proportion and so forth. So I'm going to save the file. So before we move on, I am going to um, simulate some distributions, um, just like Maxima where the distribution started with, uh, or density started with PDF, um, cumulative distribution started with um, CDF, uh, quantile function started with quantile, <coughs> random um, variable um, generation or random number generation um, started with random. In R, if the name of the distribution starts with uh, D, it would imply density. If it, is, if it starts with P, it would imply cumulative distribution function. If it started with Q, it would be the quantile function. And if it started with R, it would be random number generation. So I'm going to define a variable uh, from negative 5 to 5 and I'm going to create a density function for a normal distribution. So it has to be d norm and the value of x and which is from negative 5 to 5 and I have 256 observations. I'm going to use a mean of 8 and a standard deviation of 2. I'm going to plot the density. And that's what I end up guessing. And you can see that the mean is 8, and clearly we can't have uh, a proper density if I'm going to end from negative 5 to 5. So I'm going to go all the way up to 15, and I'm going to set type equals L. And now ha I have a proper density function centered at a mean of 8 and um, the range that where we have defined the density is from negative 5 to uh, 15. I could generate random numbers from a normal distribution uh, So random number generation should start with the letter R followed by the name of the distribution norm and I have to specify the number of observations I want to generate. I'm going to go with 1024 and the mean is going to be 8 and the standard deviation would be 2. If I did a histogram, I should get a bell curve centered um, or a histogram that is centered at 8 with a standard deviation of approximately 2.
So the freak observation would simply convert the frequency on the y-axis to a density so that we have a proper uh, density displayed um, in the histogram. So there is our nice little histogram and as we expected um, the data is centered at a mean of 8 and it has a bell-shaped um, distribution. So the next step is I am going to create a data frame with a bunch of variables So the first variable I am going to sample yes or no values and I am going to sample 128 of them and the last argument is true or false true stands for with replacement. So when I do x now, I have a bunch of yes values and no values. And the length would be 128. And I'm going to create y as a um, beta distribution, random beta distribution. I'm going to generate 100 values and you can see I have the name of the distribution which is beta and R indicates I'm going to do random number generation and the two parameters of beta are alpha and uh, beta so I have 1 and 3 and if I simulate those are the values and of course I could do a histogram to see what those values look like and that is the corresponding density that we have. So how do we create a data frame? <coughs> so a data frame is the most efficient data object in um, R. So let's just get to by data frame is more standard. So I am going to create a variable called uh, response and I'm going to save the yes or no values to response and I'm going to create another one um, let's say probability and I call I'll save all the y values to probability And I could access each of those uh, variables from the data frame by doing df dollar response and df dollar probability. I'm going to set a seed so you get a similar output as mine. And now I want to perform a statistical test and I want to perform a test for mean on the y values
And the simple command is t.test. It's going to test the um, null versus the um, alternative for a specified value. So I am going to pick the response, ver sorry, the probability variable from the data frame. And I would want to specify the null value. The null value I'm going to test against is 0.5. The alternative would be, uh, let's say, greater. So the options are greater, less than, or less, um, and two-sided. So you could always do a help over here. And you can see the options here, two-sided, less, greater, and the value of mu, confidence level, and so forth. So that is my t-test, so I'm going to save it to df.t. And that is the result, and you can see I have a test statistic of negative 14.096, degrees of freedom is 127, the p-value is 1, the confidence interval is that, the sample mean is that. So just like Maxima, the test or the statistical test, no matter what test we have, has a standard structure for the most part in R. So we can access that by typing ls um, df dot t. Um, this is very similar to uh, items take inference in Maxima. So I could access each of those items, um, p-value, um, the statistic, standard error, the estimate, the confidence interval, and so forth, by simply doing df dot t dollar statistic would give me the value of the statistic df dot t dollar p value would give me the p value and so forth I could access every single test response or the test um, values individually by using the dollar sign um, by all means df dot t is a s3 object it is a list so what do I mean by that? You could also access it by saying df.t p dot value, and that would give you the same answer. Or we could do df.t and statistic, you'll get the same answer. So but you can either use the dollar sign or you could use the double square bracket um, option, but it's better if we use dollar because we just have to type, you know, a few characters. Now we can subset data um, in R. It's pretty straightforward. So I have a data frame and I have a bunch of yes values and a bunch of no values. So I am going to create a new data frame, df.y, which would pick all the probability values if the response is equal to yes. <clears throat> the command here is subset the original data frame, which is df, and I'm going to set response equals yes. And I'm going to create another data frame, df.n. I'm going to subset df response equals no. Now if we look at it, the df.y contains all the yes values and the corresponding probabilities and df.n would contain all the no values and the corresponding probabilities. 
Now I want to see if the average probability for the yes group is the same as the no group. Um, in other words, I want to do a two-sided test. So again, it is T dot test. And since we have, sorry, two-sided, two-sample test. Since we have um, two samples, um, we are going to use the t-test, but with two variables, x and y. So x would be equal to df dot y, and y would equal to df dot um, n, which is for no. We're wanting to see if the means are the same, the average probabilities are the same, or if they are different. So mu would equal to zero. The alternative in this case would be two dot sided. And I am going to <coughs> excuse me save it to df two t to indicate that it is a two sample test. I get an error because I didn't specify the probability part. I simply specified the entire data frame. So the probability part is the continuous uh, variable here. So we have to specify that. So df dot two t is simply that value or that object. And you can see the test statistic is 0 0.1086, the p-value is 0 0.9137, indicating that the average probability in sample 1 is the same as the average probability in sample 2. So here we have a proportion test. Um, the question that I would like to answer here is, is the proportion of yes responses less than the proportion of no responses so how do we find the total number that we have? We already know that the total um, uh, ob number of observations is 128. So we could also get this information by using the dim command, which would give us the dimension of the data frame. So D would be 128 rows and two columns. It is a list, so if I simply pick one, I'm picking 128. So I'm going to call it as n, because it's the total number of observations that we have. Now we want to see the number of responses that would equal to yes. So I am going to call x as sum df dollar response equal to yes. Now that is a logical test. If you can, if you type df dollar response equals yes, we are performing a test to see if the response is equal to yes. So we're either going to get a true or a false. True would mean one, false would mean zero. So a whole bunch of trues and false. So true means one, false means zero. So if I sum um, the true values, I would get the number of observations that correspond to yes. The test that we use here is prop.test. And we use the value x 
the value m and the alternative in this case is less because we're trying to see if it is less than and I'm going to call it as df.p And that, that is the result, and it seems like the proportion of yeses and the proportion of noes are the same. Um, by default, if you go back to the command sample, when we sample it without specifying a probability, it is going to pick up with equal chances. In other words, we would have an equal number of yeses, equal number of knows but we can specify a probability vector to choose more yeses than knows or uh, fewer yeses than knows so i went with the default setting uh, which would imply that the number of yes values and the number of no values should be the same and it turns out that they are the same according to our tests the proportion of yes values and the proportion of no values um, are the same so um, the conclusion to the test is that we do not reject the null. In practice we always read data from files and R has flexibility of reading shape files, reading maps, reading tables, reading um, Excel files and whole lots of um, or reading images, reading 3D volumes and so forth. Uh, we're not going to get into all of that but we'll simply do um, the simplest case which is reading a comma separated value um, data file or a CSV file. So I have a temp.csv file which is right over here and by default um, I can go to R Studio and use import data set and I have this nice little thing here um, I can give it a name um, temp um, you can specify whether there is a column header or not if you say yes then um, it will automatically generate one um, you only select yes if there is a column header if not um, you simply say no and it is asking um, are there any NA strings if NA stands for not a number um, in which case you if there are missing values you say NA and so every single missing value is replaced by NA um, when we have string values um, we can either import it as a factor or as a string Factor is a built-in R object and it requires additional expertise in handling. So if you don't want to mess around with factors and factor levels, um, it is better to import them as strings. So if I import that, I would simply get temp and those are the values and I have a bunch of NAs in Maxima, it was simply false. That is one way of doing it, but what do, what is the command behind it? So I am going to call df dot file. So I'll call it f. The command here is read dot csv. I am going to move to the working directory. The name of the file, which is temp dot csv going to specify if there is a header or not in the file that I have there are no headers so header would be false 
And if the file name is CSV, the separator by default is a comma, but there is nothing wrong in specifying a separator. So that is the uh, syntactic way of doing it. So I have the exact same data frame. Um, so it automatically created two column names, v1 and v2. So I can access them by saying df.f$v1, df.f$v2. DF .f <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a t-test for the first column and the second column values is the average of column one greater than column so I can simply do t test df dot f dollar v one and df dot f dollar v two and I'll call it df dot rt the alternative is greater because we're doing a right tail test and by default that would be the first sample, and that would be the second sample. Um, so column one data would be the first sample, and column two data would be the second sample. And naturally, um, it ran without any problems. And there is our test result, and it seems like they are not um, different. The means are the same. Now, we didn't have to do anything in terms of the NA values um, because by default, um, the t-test function would get rid of the NAs. But there are cases where NAs would give trouble. So, how to tackle um, NAs? So, I know the first column didn't have any issues, so I'm just going to save it to X. The second column does have issues, so what I'm going to do I simply want values that are not an eight. So y, the new y would be y exclamation mark, which means not is dot n a of y. I'll call this y new. Now is dot n a would test to see if a particular observation is an A. So if I did is dot an A of Y, I end up getting true, 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 true for the last values that had an A. So when I say pick the values of Y so that the is dot an A is not true, um, then that is going to give me the values that are not an A. So y new is just the numbers. So df.rtn, it's my new test object. And it is going to give us the same answer. I'll still get 
the same conclusion, same p-value and everything. So df dot rt was or had a p-value of 0.1749 and rtn, um, df dot rtn has the same information also. As I said, most standard statistical tests in R um, would take measures to remove NAs um, by default. But there are certain tests where um, R will not remove NAs. And in those circumstances, we have to do something external, such as that, to get the uh, test working.